Our scripture reading was there in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And this is a story that is one of those stories that you don't forget. You know, there are certain stories in scripture that just always are on your mind. Stories like David and Goliath, Joshua and Jericho. This story of Ananias and Sapphira is one of those stories that just does not erase from my mind, that is there constantly. Within a few hours of each other, within a few hours of each other, a husband and his wife will die. Liter literally drop dead. And both killed by the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a story you cannot forget. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I want to again invite your spirit in this sanctuary. And may your spirit drive out any demons or fallen angels here. And may we take away any distractions and point us to your holy word. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Anna and I and Sapphira were probably middle-aged couple, most likely Jews, and as a Jewish tradition and custom, Jews had to learn a trade um, as part of their life. And you are familiar with the story, right? The church is growing, the church is doing great, and there is a need for the church. And Ananias and Sapphira, they sell a property, they come and bring it. The only thing here, if you're there in uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 3, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your hearts to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. It was against Jewish tradition, and not just tradition, against uh, Jewish mandates, even given, given through the laws of Moses, to sell your inheritance. Uh, when w whatever tribe you, you, you belong to, you would always leave your inheritance, your property, your land to your next gen gen generations. So they would have land and prosper and live and grow. And parts, you can read it there in the, in, um, in the Old Testament, that it was against, actually Moses had put it against the law to sell that property. You could not sell it. God wanted, God wanted to make sure and Moses wanted to make sure that future, that future generations had something to live, to grow, to live on. So when Ananias and Sapphira here are selling the property, it must have been additional property that they've accumulated within time. Within time. They're not selling the property that was inherited to them, but it must have been extra property, extra blessings that they had accumulated and they were enjoying this new faith that they had found in Christ Jesus and for all appearances they were good people they went to church every Sabbath they fellowship with everyone else they they appear to be doing well they're selling extra property so they must have been doing well financially but today's main point this is where we're going with the message today. That they were not punished for holding back their money. They were not punished for holding back their money, but they were punished for sinning against the Holy Spirit. And that's what, what we're going to look at today. If you look at Acts chapter 4, Ananias and Sapphira are filled with the Holy Spirit. There in verse 31. They had just been filled with the Holy Spirit there in Acts 4, 
verse 31 when it says and when they had prayed the place where where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the words of God with boldness and in this group was Ananias and Sapphira how do I know take a look at your meditation in the back of your bulletin here we we have evidence that Ananias and Sapphira were part of that Holy Spirit pouring into the church it says there from Acts of the Apostles page 71 and 72 in sharp contrast to the example of benevolence shown by the believers was the conduct of Ananias and Sapphira they had been present with other believers when after the apostle had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit with the Holy Ghost there in Acts 4 31 so were Ananias and Sapphira part of that group sure and they were filled and they were also spoke the words of God with boldness and then it continues saying deep conviction had rested upon all present and who brings that conviction the Holy Spirit they were just filled with the Holy Spirit and they were all convicted had rested upon all presence und and under the direct influence of the Spirit of God Ananias and Sapphira had made a pledge to give to the Lord the proceeds from the sale of certain property afterwards Ananias and Sapphira grieved the Holy Spirit by yielding to feelings of covetousness so there we even see the sin against the Holy Spirit so who gave Ananias and Sapphira the idea even to sell the property the Holy Spirit you can almost you can almost you can almost picture it. the people there I don't know if they were in the synagogue or they're in in a meeting place but they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they see the needs in the church they see the needs of other people and that may be lacking food or clothing or maybe a home and the church is growing and they and the Holy Spirit reminds them and I can picture Anna and I and Sapphira talking to each other hey you know that rental property we can sell that and give that to the church hey you know that property that that, that extra property we have the church needs it more than we do the Holy Spirit is moving among the people to care and to share and to give and the people are being led by the Spirit if you were to read the beginning chapters there of Acts 1 through 4 you see that they even gave and that everyone's needs was supplied everyone's needs was supplied as the church was growing and growing so whose idea was it for Ananias and Sapphira to sell their property it was the Holy Spirit's idea it was the Holy Spirit's idea the thought to sell the property was not their own it came from the Holy Spirit you see because you and I cannot do anything good on our own we can't we can't even take credit for coming here to church this morning who gave you or reminded you last night tomorrow with the Sabbath prepare and this morning when you woke up to come it was the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is reminding us to come to church we can't take credit for returning our tithe the Holy Spirit reminds us we can't even take credit for helping out in whatever ministry we may be involved in it's all the work of the Holy Spirit every single good work that we do is because the Holy Sp Spirit is influencing in our lives and we are listening and yielding to his voice to his voice if you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 30 I'll show you I'll show you that the Holy Spirit is involved in guiding us Isaiah chapter 30 Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 on our own on our own we we are selfish on our own we are greedy only think about ourselves 
And, that, and that's part of the carnal nature that, are, that we lean toward to, but the Holy Spirit guides us. There, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, it says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or wherever you turn to the left hand. And that voice is the Holy Spirit that is guiding us. Turn to the book of John. John chapter 16. Here Jesus even reminds us that is, it is His Spirit that is guiding us our thoughts. John chapter 16 verse 13. It says, however, when he, who is a he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into our truth. So any Bible truth that you're learning and that, you, and that you're accepting comes from who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you of things to come. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the ideas, who, who impresses on us. Look at Romans chapter 8. This is how bad we are. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We, can't, there is, we cannot do absolutely anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. And this is something that I really want to, to, to grain in, in your mind today. Because the sin of Ananias and Sapphira was sinning against the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Here the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Praise the Lord. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We cannot even, have, we cannot even pray a decent prayer on our own. We can't. Scripture is telling us here that the Holy Spirit hears our prayers and interprets them and says, Father, this is really what they need. This is really what they meant. Praise the Lord. Our prayers, our prayers on our own without the Holy Spirit are a joke. But praise the Lord here. He helps us in our weakness for we don't even know what we should pray. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. He helps us even when we pray. And the Holy Spirit told Ananias and Sapphira, you have extra property and there is a need in the church. Take care of the need. You can afford to do it. And the problem with Ananias and Sapphira was that, was that the Holy Spirit gave them the idea and they lied saying that they had followed through with the idea of the Holy Spirit. Their sin was not that they listened to the Holy Spirit. The sin was that they listened to the Holy Spirit and ignored the Holy Spirit. And Peter recognized it. The same was not that they listened to the Holy Spirit. All of us are listening and we hear the Holy Spirit talking to us, convicting us, leading us. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira was that they ignored the guidings of the Holy Spirit. They ignored the still small voice. See, God didn't need their money. He needed their hearts. He needed their hearts. Your sin isn't that you, didn't come, that you don't come to church. Your sin is that the Holy Spirit is reminding you throughout the week and even more on Friday and even more on Saturday morning when He wakes you up. That's a miracle alone. And that we ignore the voice to come to church. Our sin isn't that we keep the tithes in, in, in our wallets. No, the sin is that the Holy Spirit reminds us to return to God what is His. 
and that we ignore that voice. The sin is not that you don't volunteer in the church, no, but that the Holy Spirit impresses on you and you see the needs of the different departments and ministries that need help. And maybe the Holy Spirit is impressing on you. You can do that. But you ignore the pressings and the voice of the Holy Spirit. In the early church, Everyone was giving, was serving, was working, was doing something. Everyone. And God is not satisfied with members doing nothing. Nothing. This, this, as, as I said earlier, this sermon isn't about money. It's about ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit. Whether he is telling you to change a life habit, or he is telling you to get involved in church, Ignoring that voice, friends, ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit, that is where the sin is. And this is, this, this, this is a serious topic. This is very serious for us today. Because Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 tells us that God says, My spirit will not always strive with man. God is telling us, Jesus himself says, as it was in the days of Noah, that's how it's going to be before I come. And in the days of Noah, the Holy Spirit did not always stick around. There was a time before the flood that the Spirit left. And Jesus, and, and the, the Bible tells us that my spirit shall not always strive with man. That should really wake us up. How about Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30? There where the Bible says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed. Do not grieve the Spirit. Do not sadden Him. Do not turn Him away. Do not grieve. That. These, were, these texts le are letting us know that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can get grieved. The Holy Spirit can get tired. 1 Thessalonians 5.19 tells us, Do not quench the Spirit. What does it mean to quench? To put out, right? If you're going to quench a fire, you, you put it out. There is no more fire. Here, Paul is telling us, you can actually put out the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. Don't do that. These are serious texts, friends. And the Holy Spirit isn't always, the Holy Spirit, friend, isn't always going to put up with our pathetic excuses or so-called justifications in us doing what we want to do while He is impressing us and calling us to do something else. The sin of Ananias and Sapphira wasn't that they held back the money. Even Peter said, you didn't have to sell it. You didn't have to give all of it. But that they said, yes, this is all. They were not lying, as Peter said to Peter, but they were lying to the Spirit whom the Holy Spirit had even given them the idea first to begin with. That's who they were lying to. And it's a dangerous thing, friends, to push away the Holy Spirit. Because every time we push away the Holy Spirit, we get a callus of pushing Him more and more and more and more until you don't even recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus says, all sin can be forgiven. Amen? Every sin, even blasphemy against God. But the one that cannot be forgiven is which one? The sin against the Holy Spirit. And you know why it can be forgiven? Because who is the one that convicts us to even feel bad and to seek God's forgiveness? It's the Holy Spirit. He is the one. He's the one who helps us in our prayers, as we read earlier. So if the Holy Spirit is so far away from us because we've pushed Him and ignored Him and ignored Him and ignored Him away, we're not going to ask even for forgiveness. The reason why the sin against the Holy Spirit is unforgivable is because we don't ask for forgiveness. And God with a crying and bleeding heart wants to forgive you and heal you. 
But if you don't ask, he's not going to do it. He's not going to come to me and say, Harley, I'm going to forgive you even though you don't ask for it. God is a God of love and just and of a God of free will. And so that's why it is dangerous. And, and here we see these, these texts that remind us, do not grieve the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. So how do we fix this? Well, praise the Lord for the Word of God. If you turn to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. How can we then not quench the Holy Spirit? How can we then help ourselves or improve in not making the same mistakes as Ananias and Sapphira? Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel is before Daniel. And after Jeremiah. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Is it easy to remember? Ezekiel 36, 26. Here God is saying, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will, notice that, you will keep my, command, my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the, hand, in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. But here in these three texts, how is it that we can fix our problem of grieving away? And number one is asking for the Holy Spirit. Here God gives us a new heart and he will put his spirit. Notice in verse 27, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk. Sometimes we, we worry more about the doings. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to give my tithe. I need to go to church. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Because a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit will do the things. A person who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Here, the Bible is clear and the Bible does not lie. I will put my spirit within you. And once he, once he does, he will cause you to walk in, in his statues. He will call you to walk in his ways. He will put his spirit within you and you will keep his judgments. First, we worry about being filled with the spirit of God. And once you are filled, he will cause us to do what he wants us to do. Psalms chapter 51. Look at Psalms chapter 51. Most of us or some of us are familiar with this Psalms, the Psalms of, of David of his repentance after he sinned a great sin which by the way any sin is a great sin Psalms chapter 51 you remember the story of King David was taking a stroll outside his kingdom and he saw a beautiful woman taking a bath you remember, remember that, that, that story? What was her name? Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Was, she, was she married? Yes. yes, to a soldier, a faithful soldier. Faithful to the army, to God's kingdom. And David liked her. And so he says, okay. So he invited her. And not only sinned in committing adultery, but even sinned in killing her husband and putting him right in front of the battle and then asking the, his people to draw back. And, and all for what? For a, a woman. Do you think the Holy Spirit was telling David, hey, that's somebody's wife? Was, was, the, was, the, was the Spirit working with David? Absolutely. Even when David asked, who's that? There his men said, oh, that's Bathsheba, Uriah's wife. She's already taken, my Lord. And the king can have any other single woman that he would like. 
The, the, the Spirit of God was working with David and David and then, that's why in Psalms 51 verse 10 this, this whole Psalms is David's repentance and what does he ask for in verse 10 create in me a clean heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me away from your presence do not take your Holy Spirit from me David had been hearing the voice of the Spirit of God and now he came to realize that he was quenching the Spirit and that's where true repentance comes in you now sometimes we're so easy to say oh I'm sorry Lord that, that, that it's just a habit and there is no remorse how many of you have ever even prayed Lord I'm sorry for not even being sorry I have sometimes we do things and we know they're wrong but Lord, Lord I'm sorry but there's no true remorse and so Lord forgive me for not even feeling the remorse and the first thing that comes to my mind is the spirit, the spirit is not that close as I want him to be. That I don't feel the remorse. Lord, I'm sorry for not even being sorry. And David here is praying, Lord, do not take away your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. With your generous spirit. Friends, church, Jesus is coming very soon Amen. and even if Jesus still took a thousand more years how many more years do you have to live a thousand I don't think so if you're like me and let's say you live up to a hundred I have 60 more years that's not much and that is if I live <laughs> and something that that we try to 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 put even in our children's mind is to always be right with the Lord because God can call you to sleep today or next week or next month or next year so Regardless of when Jesus will come, friends, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. And we need to always have the Spirit close to us, talking to us, helping in our prayers, directing us in which way we should go. You see, the sin isn't that we ate what we shouldn't have eaten. The sin is that God was talking to us, the Spirit was telling, no, 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 no. You don't need that cigarette. Put that down. No, no, no. That's bad for your body. No, no, no. Your cholesterol is already high. Don't eat that. And we ignore that voice. That's the sin. Ignoring the voice of the Spirit. No, 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 no. The Spirit says, there are plenty of beautiful women in Israel. There's no need to be looking over here in Babylon and ignoring the voice and looking and chasing after young men in Babylon or women in Babylon. Ignoring the voice of the Spirit is where Ananias and Sapphira sin against God. So I just appeal to you this morning I would really appeal to you this morning to evaluate yourself. Evaluate yourself and your heart. If we are ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit, first thing is repent to the Lord for even ignoring the voice. If you read there Psalm 51, the beginning before verse 10, David himself recognizes that sin. 
And that's why he pleads, do not remove your spirit from me. So returning back to the book of Acts, as the church was growing, they didn't grow because they had an evangelistic meetings and everyone came in. No, they were growing because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they don't ignore the Holy Spirit and they lean and the Holy Spirit says there's a need here. There is a need over here. And they're working and doing something because they are listening and acting on the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you can ask yourself if you are an obeyer of the Holy Spirit or an ignorer of the Holy Spirit. And only you can answer that question. Only you and God. Only you and God can answer that question. How many of you here would like to be more involved in the church? Okay, raise your hand so I can really see them. This, this is, okay. Okay, that's a good percentage. The first thing you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit to fill your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill your heart. And once He is filling your heart and you're asking Him, Lord, in, in what do you need me to do? And what do you need me to do? And friends, there are many things that can be done here at church. I'm going to just name a few. Um, I'm going to ask, if you hear your name called, just, just stand up so people can recognize who you are. But Kathy Stevens, I saw her here. There she is, up in the balcony. Kathy Stevens is our head deaconess. If you want to be involved with our deaconesses in, in, our, in, in the service of, that the women do in our church, Kathy Stevens would be the person that should be more than happy to, to, work, to work with you. Ron Leyland, I saw him here. There he is, is our, is, is our head deacon. And even though we have good deacons at work, there are other things that deacons can do and get more people involved. Thank you very much. Manny, Manuel Moya, I saw him here. Where are you, Manuel? He stepped out, he stepped out. okay. He is, he, he is involved in church projects. You like to fix things. The church needs some things to be fixed. And he helps with building projects. Rosie Devlin helps in, 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 in organizing the meals of our, of, that we have in the kitchen, our fellowship meals, and the way we minister as well to those um, with the kitchen as well. Steve Wilson. Steve Wilson is here. He's our Pathfinder director. And any God, please help us with Pathfinders and Adventures. Amen and amen. It is by the grace of God, I'll tell you that, that these two clubs are continuing and functioning. They are understaffed. And there is plenty of young blood in this church to step up. There is. There is plenty of young people, young adults. But praise the Lord, you want to help out with them. There is Steve Wilson, there is Marie Swayze who also helps out with our adventures. He is up in the balcony. Um, I don't see Diane, w Diane Westcott here. Is there anyone here from the Hope Clinic? I know also Margaret um, Tharp is involved with that. Patricia Westcott. And so, so the Hope Clinic, just, just go on over to the Hope Clinic and just tell them, I want to do something. They'll put you to work. They'll put you to work. Tina Colburn, where's Tina? Oh, our choir director, praise the Lord. You know, when she was asking for, 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 for volunteers, I was really saddened that just the choir started with three people. You remember, Tina? And I know that I don't sing. I know that. But I know that I can get trained to sing. Amen. 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 And when you sing more with a group, it's much easier. <laughs> I need Mr. Swayze next to me because I follow his tune. God can help and train you in whatever God needs to do. I know that Alvin Maori up in our sound booth and as well as Lant in our video can use help as well. Friends, there is Ed Barcelona. Many know who Ed Barcelona is. I saw him here earlier. 
There he is. He will be helping with, with outreach, with door-to-door -door ministry, if you, if you want to be involved with that. If you like children, I know that Pat Chastain, where, there she is, with, with Manny, as our Sabbath school superintendents, are always looking for help in our lower divisions of Sabbath school classes. Friends, these are just a few. But there are plenty of things to do here at church. I can't, Annette Boyer, right, is, is sitting right here, one of our organists. You want to use your talent, you play an instrument and you want to play as we sing the hymns, it would be more than welcome. In playing your instruments, if you have the gift of playing an instrument, you would like to use it for the work of God, use it for the work of God. There is plenty to do in this church, friends. Plenty to do. And the Holy Spirit may be impressing in your mind or may be really talking to you. There is a need here. There is a need in this small group. There is a need over here. And you can feel it, friends. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit, friends. So my appeal this morning is that simple. Do not turn off the Holy Spirit. Do not put him aside. Because the Bible tells us that the Spirit is not always going to stick around here. There will come a time where he will leave. Well, he will leave. But even though he will leave, friends, God has not left us. Because Jesus says, I will be with you low until the end of the world. But it will be a lot much harder and tougher when the Holy Spirit is removed from this earth completely. And so I just appeal to you to be involved, to do not quench the voice of the Holy Spirit. He is the one that is telling us to follow His path. Do not try to find justifications, even in Scripture. Well, I found this verse that justifies what I want to do. And you can still hear the still small voice in, in your head. The Holy Spirit telling you, you know better. You know better. God bless you, church. God bless you. God bless you, church. We don't know how much time we have on this earth, whether by the coming of Jesus or by the breath in our bodies. But every minute that we have, let us cling to the Holy Spirit and not quench the Holy Spirit as He is the one who seals us and prepares us for the soon coming of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you very much because you saw it necessary for Jesus to go back home but leave us the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much for His work. And I just ask you, Lord, that we do not ignore the Holy Spirit. That we do not quench Him, we do not draw Him away. But that we, even if it hurts in us, that we need to repent, Lord. Because even He brings us the need for repentance. Lord, it was asked earlier this morning that you give me a, a double portion of your Holy Spirit. I ask that you give these, your church, your church people, your church members, a double portion of your Holy Spirit. And that if we have grieved you, oh Lord, please forgive us. Forgive us even when we are not sorry. Forgive us for not being sorry. But bring in us a stronger conviction of your spirit that may awaken that real repentance and real need of being sorry. And so Lord, this is your church. These are your people. Lord, I ask that you fill them with your spirit and that they may not willfully grieve your spirit. 
Bless your church here in Cleburne. Bless your church around the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.